Okay, we're live. Welcome everyone. We're just doing our last like ingredient check. Get yourselves together. We'll start in a couple minutes. And I'm dicing my cucumber. If you're not, if you haven't turned your oven on, get it up to about 200 as soon as possible because we're going to use that. And I think I forgot to put it in the prep. So get your oven up to 200 and just let's do a final prep before we get cracking. Yeah, put the oven on thermofan or convection. Is there a difference between convection and thermofan? Same. Same, thought so. Okay. 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 The feed. <laughs> Every time. Okay. okay, what's my time? It is it's nearly half. Yeah. Okay, so you're finishing your cucumber, the parsley you chopped just now? Well I can chop yeah, I suppose I can chop that on the fly. Yeah. It's a lot of cucumber. Yeah, yes. There's definitely gonna be leftovers, by the way. This is this is for four, yeah. So it's uh, I'll take that to It's your recipe, you know that. Yeah. It's just, I don't think it doesn't have salt and pepper on it. In the recipe. In the ingredient. Uh, we'll get there. Okay, someone's yeah. commented. Hello, Jono, what's happening in the kitchen? Nikki, Captain Neo Tires. Hello, Nikki. We're, getting, we're just getting ready here. Uh, we're about to start with our Wednesday cook along. Uh, Every, every Friday, I post ingredients on the Facebook group, Supper Heroes, and every Wednesday, we cook all of those ingredients together. So it's usually recipes from my books. I mean, to date, we haven't done recipes not from the books. And, uh, and yeah, it's a fun way to enjoy a nice meal under my supervision, I suppose, and um, something different to do, especially when you know your favorite takeouts are unavailable and you've got all this time at home, you're not stuck yeah. in traffic. I think there was a cucumber issue in the recipe. Yeah. Because Jenny is saying no cucumber in the recipe. Have I got the same recipe? Oh. Well. It was on your, no cucumber in your prep. In my prep. Oh, well, this could be great then. Oh, it's just, is this what you said then? Yeah. This exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's under, for the collie rice tabbouleh. Oh, it's under the collie rice tabbouleh. No, that's the prep sheet that you've got there. That's what went into the post. Medium cucumber dice. Medium cucumber dice. Oh, well, it's not a train smash if you don't have it. But if you do have one, go and grab it. If you don't, it's okay. It's just something to freshen up the, the collie rice. Okay, we're ready to start, actually. It must be half past by now. Okay, Leslie starts almost ready. Okay. Come on, Leslie. Put your game face on. Yeah, cool. All right, people, let's do this. Okay. Alrighty, welcome to Wednesday Night Supper Heroes Cook Along. I'm John o Proudfoot, which you have to know by now. And tonight we are doing chimula chicken kebabs. We're doing a spiced pumpkin salad with on, on fresh rocket with goat's cheese and some toasted sunflower seeds. And then we're doing a kali rice tabbouleh, which is like a tabbouleh without wheat. And this is one of uh, Kate's favorite recipes. She actually developed it for Raising Superheroes or for my online course, one of the two, like a while back. She can't remember, but she loves it. Um, before we get cracking, I'm going to go through all the ingredients now, but drop what you're doing, turn on your oven on convection, get it up to 200 if you've just joined us now. You said 180 to 200. 180 to 200. Alrighty. And then let's and get your skewers in water. So these, these are little bamboo skewers that was also missing from the prep. Get those into some water. If you don't have skewers, don't stress. You can use a fondue, something or other. Uh, what can you use? What else can you use instead of a skewer? A tent peg, <laughs> literally. Th those are the big skewers we got inside. Those are tent pegs. Uh, or you can do this without skewers and just do it like a surf fry. But I would highly recommend um, using skewers. Okay, so let's go through it. Nick, can you give me the wide so that I can point at everything? Okay, you want to do gear check as well? Yeah. So we'll do the okay. So. 
for the chicken kebabs, we've got some chicken. Um, I deboned a huge giant chicken earlier on today. Uh, so I've got breast and thigh, but you should have like 16 odd thighs. Don't look at mine. This is like the biggest chicken I've ever seen in my entire life. So two of these leg and thighs and two um, breasts are going to be like more than what we need. Then we've got, okay, and for that we've got chamula marinade, which I made yesterday. Um, we've got the diced peppers, so swatch these around. And then we've got these bamboo skewers soaked in, um, in water. A mixing bowl to mix up your chicken. And then a tray to cook your chicken in the oven with. And I'm going to use a griddle pan to griddle all these chicken pieces off. I might need to shorten my skewers or change my strategy there. Okay. Then for the spiced pumpkin, pardon? Do them at an angle. Thank you, Kate. Okay. And then for the spiced pumpkin salad, we've got pumpkin diced nice and small like that. And some sunflower seeds. These are untoasted. We'll toast them later. And then I've got a mix of spices, which is nutmeg, coriander and cumin and some fresh rockets and then goat's cheese okay check and then for that all we need is a, a small mixing bowl and a whisk which is to make the dressing with and i think that's it oh okay and then a big mixing bowl um which my pumpkins are already in and that's to mix the spices and the oils together before they roast then finally all right kate's going to slow down i'm just going to slow down then finally, for the tabbouli, we need some cauliflower rice. So this is like grated cauliflower, and we've got some fresh mint and some fresh parsley. It's about a cup of mint. I've got like a cup of parsley here, but that doesn't, you know, I just like lots of parsley. Then some avo, which I think is out of frame, and, um, and some cherry tomatoes, which are quartered, and some diced cucumber. And then finally, we're going to make some garlic yogurt. And the garlic yogurt is just to freshen up the chicken kebabs. So I've got a cup of authentic cost clover yogurt, <laughs> Greek yogurt, and then just a clove of garlic and we've got salt and pepper. You can add a squeeze of lemon or some cucumber to the yogurt if you like. It's up to you. Um, but we've got to get cracking now. So the very first thing we're going to do, and Nick, you can bring it on to the, the, like, the double view thing. Okay, so while you're gathering your prep together, the very first thing we've got to do is get the pumpkin going. So grab your pumpkin and your spices. And uh, we've got coriander, cumin, and nutmeg. So I've just mixed them together, but you can just chuck them all in. Okay. It's quite spicy. Mine's caked up because I used a wet bowl. A bit of a fail. Teaspoon over there. And... It should say it's a big crack of fresh salt, salt and black pepper. Does it? Mm. Yes, it does. Salt and pepper. Okay, salt and pepper. So this is the incredible, this is like the, this is going to keep us honest. So after this goes in the oven, basically the idea is that we want to be ready with everything else as this comes out of the oven. So we're going to take this out, so we're going to put the chicken in, and then as this cools, we'll make, plate everything up and serve. So the order is pumpkin in, prep the chicken, prep the salads, and then get going. Why are you laughing at me? I'm all over, I'm all over the place. No, I'm laughing uh, some messages I'm getting. Uh, is my sound good? Jean Crook says your sound is absolutely perfect. Thank you. That, Crook. That's Jean Crook. Jean. Oh. Yeah. Awesome, Jean. I'm glad. Okay, so smash some oil in there and just mix it around. You want to get a good coating. This is fantastic. Okay, so you've, you've said 20 minutes of, of roasting time. Yeah, and then 45 in the recipe. So. But they don't, they don't haven't seen the recipe. And th that was the whole thing. So in the recipe in the book, it says 45 minutes, but those are like big chunks. And then the reason I said cut small chunks is to make it roast fast okay and that's why the oven's on slightly hotter so you don't have to wrap your wrap your tray in tin foil if you don't want to we do it because we have to clean the trays ourselves and it's re a real hack so if you wrap your tray in tin foil it'll save you the time you just peel the tin foil off and the tray is clean so let's do that pour, pour it all out onto the tray and make sure when you do this you don't really want layers 
because basically as much of the of the tray as possible you want to be you want to space them sparsely spread them out sparsely so that there's air flow between each piece and that's going to guarantee you that you get like bits of color and little charred bits between each piece so spread them out and once they're spread out like that bang them straight in the oven Cool. Okay, what's next, Kate? Chicken. Chicken, okay. So I was hoping actually to try and explain a way to do this before we started the demo, but. Sorry, I just know I need this a bit later, so I wanted to just clean. Alrighty, the chicken. Okay, we're gonna get our boards dirty here. So I want you to grab your thighs. I've left the skin on just because. <laughs> chicken thighs. <laughs> I want you to grab your chicken thighs. And if you look closely, you can see the muscle is spread out into these different things. It's got like strips or lines. And what you want to try and do is divide them into two pieces. But if they're huge, you can divide them into three. Okay. So I'm going to cut this thigh into three pieces. And uh, depending on the size, you'll get like, you might get more, might get less, fewer. Okay, but these are enormous chicken thighs. Okay, so that's one, two, three. And I mean, look at the size of this thigh. This chicken must have been like a turkey. It was enormous. So again, you're probably going to get like four out of here. And what we're, we're just going to cut all the chicken pieces. So if you're ahead of me and your chicken's already cut, pour yourself a glass and relax. I'm just going to do some heavy lift. Uh, pour yourself a glass of water and relax. Like, I've been running around all day, so I'm going to have a sip. Okay. So the reason I bought a whole chicken instead of the thighs is that about six months ago, we quit, as a family, we quit eating um, any factory farmed meat. And I couldn't get non-factory farmed chicken thighs. I feel like my screen's about to turn off. There we go. So now we buy, so the only like woke chicken we could get, woke being like grass fed or free range or pasture reared or whatever, you could buy in our areas from Frankie Fenner at late notice. So. I snuck off to Frankie and bought a chicken and it was enormous. So here we are. So I'm going to use some breast. I don't really like using breast because it gets dry if you overcook it, whereas the thigh is very forgiving. But we do what we can do. Okay, so, and this is a chicken oyster. I deboned the chicken oyster. But these are all the pieces. Okay, so now we've got one, two, let's just space them out. Okay, if you need me to slow down, post a comment. If you need me to hurry up, post a comment. Hannah Bryant is watching. Hannah Bryant. Hello, Hannah. Hannah. I saw Hannah Banana at Woolies yesterday. Oh. Okay, here we are. Sarah Francis is watching from the UK. Oh, really? Hello, Sarah. What's it like? It's probably like the mid-afternoon there. She says it's hot and sunny. It's hot and sunny. That's amazing. It's hot and sunny here too. It was actually a perler today in Cape Town. Okay, here we go. I'm not gonna use the whole skewer, I don't think. I think these skewers are a bit long. Oh, you're just not battling with your... No, not battling. Um, I'm just thinking about the size of the skewers. Okay. And here's my little chicken fillet.
So I'm actually cutting this deliberately to get as much skin on as possible. But many people like to throw the skin away. I'm just gonna pop this in a bowl. Because I think I've got enough. There's the fillet. Okay, how are we looking? Is everyone ready for the next step? Are you ready? Hello, Louise Jacobs from Mossel Bay. Okay, I'm just going to do the rest of the chicken then. No, I think that you should do your... You should just get going. Yeah, man. What are we ready for? Um, nothing really. I'm just waiting. I just don't want to... I heard last week that things are quite hectic. It's difficult to follow because it's so fast. Because yeah. I know what to do, but not necessarily everyone else does. Okay, so the next step... Often you'll get told to marinate the kebabs after you've made them. But this is a bit of a cheat. So we're going to get our hands nice and dirty, and we're just going to pour the marinade over the chicken and toss them around. So here's the marinade I made last night. Just wash this hand. The, washing this hand makes absolutely no difference to my life because it's about to get even dirtier. But, yeah? Okay, so if you don't want to make the chamula yourself and you want a good brand in South Africa, we have Pesto Princess and they make a great chamula. Their chamula, by the way, so I was talking about chamula last night. You get chamula that you can serve as a side and then you get chamula that you use, that you can use like raw. And the Pesto Princess is one that you can do both with. So you can serve it as like a side to dip like bread into if that's your game uh, or you can or you can cook with it so i would highly recommend the pesto princess one okay hands dirty in the sauce and you want to toss it all around and get some chamula covering all of this chicken if you haven't done it already obviously i think yesterday when i did the chamula dem i said go for it do your thing okay so toss them around There we go. Okay, now is the bit where there's absolutely no point in washing your hands. Let me move this board. He said as he washed his hands. I was just going to give this board a little wipe. Should I just flip it? Yeah, I'll just flip it. Hey? That whole raw chicken thing, hey? That's real. Whatever myth you've heard about chicken, the raw chicken thing, it's real. Apparently raw pork's not that much of a big deal these days. Okay, so now grab your chicken tray, get your pieces of pepper over here. Nick, I think we can still go to the top and bottom, hey? I think it can still work. Can it? Can you people, can everyone see? Can angle this down slightly. There we go. No, I like the other one. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to take a piece of chicken. I feel like I should cut these. Can I cut them? Okay. All right. So you're going to take a piece of chicken and then a piece of pepper. So. Chicken first. <laughs> Because Kate says chicken first. And I'm the boss. And Kate's the boss. Okay. We are, this is, May is the worst week financially of my whole year because it's Mother's Day. Well, it's a month. It's a, month. a month. Yeah, yeah. It's Mother's Day, Kate's birthday, and our wedding anniversary all in the same month. And as of two years ago, we have a son who was born on the 25th of April which makes all four of those events fit in the same pay cycle. So she's being very kind to me because she knows it's a special weekend coming up. <laughs> How many more? I'll do 
Okay, we're going to do one more. So one more piece of paper. In odds. In odds? Yeah, five pieces. Five pieces. Okay, Kate says unevens is great. So here we go with another piece. And there we go. Okay, so that's the game we're into. That's what we're looking for. Chicken and um, other stuff. So the whole idea here is that I've tried to keep them all at the same angle so that when we cook them, they'll cook evenly together. Okay, alone together. All right, next. So now the race is on to just get this done because this is the work, the labor. Get your kids involved, get the hands dirty, get them going. If you bought your kebabs, then you miss out on the pleasure of getting dirty, but you probably save quite a lot of time. Where are you going? I'm checking the weather. Oh, okay. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Hey, is it good? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pumpkin should be good, everyone. Well, I said eight in the recipe, That's quite big. but these are huge. So if you've got leftover chicken and you don't feel like making any more skewers, that's fine. If you want to make bigger skewers to use more chicken, that's also fine. The eight skewers was just a guideline um, to give you two each. But it really is up to you. One, two, three, four, five. Five, Kate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who? No, I'll probably clap two. Yeah, easily. Need my protein, but. <laughs> ah. Okay. So while I'm filling the silence, um, I sent out a newsletter today on Real Meal Revolution, and we're running a special. So if you sign up for the Real Meal Revolution online course, and you pay for three months up front, get a 20% discount. So if you go to our website and just say sign up, you'll find it. That's realmealrevolution.com. And apart from you know the like routine of teaching you how to do low carb and everything, uh, all of my recipes from all of my books are on that platform, as well as meal plans and guidance from experts. And like we get free coaching. Well, it's included because it's obviously not free, but Every Friday, we have a live coaching session with me, and we have a dietitian Q&A with Bridget Surtees, who's the dietitian who wrote Raising Superheroes with me. And there's some members watching. I know that some of them might want to comment and say, yes, Jono, the program's amazing. Um, but it really is super cool, and um, their hands are dirty with chicken. But the beauty of it is, at the moment, you're stuck at home. And what I was saying in the newsletter or in an ad I was writing, is that, you know, when you're trying to lose weight, the excuses I hear the most about a health transformation are that you are very busy, you're always on the road, you don't know how to say no in social situations, and um, what was the other one? Don't know how to say no in social situations, life's too hectic, and uh, I can't remember the other one. But basically, oh, and then when I drink alcohol, I just fall off the bus completely. So alcohol is currently illegal, and there are no social situations. And even though it's hectic what's going on, life is a lot less hectic. So this is actually the perfect time to sign up for a you know, lifestyle transformation, because basically you get to practice all of these skills in the safety of your own home. So when we finally do get unleashed on the wild and we're allowed to socialize again, you'll be well rehearsed at eating the right foods, you will have experienced some of the benefits, so it'll be easier for you to stick to your guns because you can actually feel, feel good, feel good about yourself. Everyone will see you and be like, oh my goodness, how did you manage to get so thin and healthy during lockdown? So check it out. Go to realmealrevolution.com. Maybe I'll see you on Friday, the mindset session. Okay, chicken, how many have we got? One, two, three, four. Oh, I, I robbed myself here. There we go. Okay, one, two, three. Four, and one more. OK, 
Okay, it's going to get really smoky in here just now, Kate. Just warning you. Okay, this is the heavy lifting. The rest is all just assembling, I promise. It's very easy to do the rest of the, the, um, the cook along, but this is worth it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how you can do it so that you can actually do this for a dinner party. Like when you're having friends around and you're running around, you can do everything that we're doing now like a day in advance. Um, Timothy Bourne wants to know if you soak the kebabs beforehand. Yeah. Timothy, I soaked the key, kebabs beforehand. I posted that in a little video earlier. Um, but, you know, if we're not doing it on the fry, then it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't know. I mean, I can, off, like, we've soaked them for like five minutes before. You know, it's not like, it's not a game changer if you don't soak them. It's just like best practice, I guess. Hey, Kate. Yes, it's a game changer on the fry. It's a game changer on the fry because you don't really want the thing that's holding your meat together to set on fire and disintegrate. Okay, here we go. Hippie with another question. I'd love to hear some feedback on the podcast with Robert Sivas. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We had Robert Sivas on two weeks ago. He was talking about carb addiction and how COVID-19 gets into your red blood cells using sugar as like an accelerator. Crazy stuff. Um, and then he was talking about different emotional management techniques. That's super cool. So if you want to check that out, go to the videos on my page at the John o. Proudfoot and, uh, and watch that. That was super cool. Fascinating guy. Low carb doc. He's, his wife is pregnant at the moment and they are on a ketogenic diet. So they're doing like the keto incubation, basically growing a keto baby. One, two, three, four. Okay. Get the griddle pan nice and hot. Okay. That's five, I think. Yes, like I skewered my finger so hard just now. I think there's like a plank in it. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, well, for some reason, it seems to have worked out perfectly for me. I hope everyone's numbers work out. Peppers, not so much. <laughs> you run out? No, no, no. I've got way too much pepper. Yeah. But I did. I said cut them into 12 pieces, and I think I've got like, I think my peppers cut into like 15 or 16 pieces. So I've got leftovers. Here we go. Yo, let's check this finger of mine. It's hurting. Okay. That's what I was saying the other day. Like my first day in every kitchen, I cut a piece of my finger off. It's taken me like six cook-alongs to really put some damage in there. That's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. So I've got my five pieces together. I'm going to do a little quick tidy, and I'm going to get my griddle pan hot. That's key. So you want to get your griddle pan onto the hottest heat that you can actually find because it's going to take a, little, a few minutes to heat up. Okay, can I ask you a favor while I wash my hands? Why don't you just light down and put the gas on full? You just slide it up. Okay. You do oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah? Like this. Oh. <laughs> okay, try again. Wow. Okay, well, the good news is I've got the splinter. Vanessa Hill and Tessa Whitfield both listen to, and Gene Cook all listen to. Oh, to this, to Robert Sivers, yeah. Oh, Robert Sivers, yeah. 
yeah, it's super cool. Super cool. Very nice. Um, okay, well, we've got like a couple minutes before this griddle pan heats up. If you're doing this at home and you don't have a griddle pan, you can use a, a, a you know a heavy base frying pan, or like I said, you could use a briar or a gas briar. The idea is that you want it to be like stinking hot because we want to almost get char or burn on the marinade, but it can still be raw in the middle because we're going to finish it off in the oven. And if you were doing a dinner party, uh, this is super cool because you can grill off all the chicken in advance and leave it raw in the middle. You can, you know, in catering, sometimes they do this like the day before and then they arrive at a function and then they just put everything in the oven at the client so that they don't have to smoke out the client's house. So this is common practice in the food industry. And uh, now you're like an insider. So you know how it's done, how they do it so fast and so clean with so much cleanliness. Uh, while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a quick and easy one. I've got the yogurt. I'm sure everyone's busy cleaning up and getting themselves together. So I'm gonna grate my clove of garlic into my yogurt and just put that aside. So I've got a little micro plan, just popping it in. And the original recipe from the book is actually to have dukkha yogurt. Um, but I just simplified it because with the dukkha and the chamula and then the, the salad dressing and all of these different elements is going to turn into a bit of a beast of a cook along. So if you've got some like Nomu dukkha or any kind of dukkha lying around, you can chuck it in. It'll just add to the, the flavor. Otherwise, garlic yogurt will be just fine. And a little salt and pepper. And a little salt and pepper. Can I put a squirt of lemon in here? Yeah, put some salt and pepper. As the yeah, that's good. So you can use the microplane as a um, strainer sieve, so you don't get any pips. Where does the word pip squeak come from? Google it. I can't wait to find out. Okay. Okay, then just stir these guys around. You can also add a little squirt of olive oil in here if you like. Okay, garlic yogurt, sorted. Okay, then this chicken, this griddle pan seems to be pretty hot. So Kate didn't want me to cut the skewers, but I'm gonna cut them a little bit. It's gonna make my life so much easier. I won't tell anyone if you decide to. just so that they fit in the griddle pan and then I don't have to go on the diagonal. So if you've got long skewers like I do, please feel free to cut them. There's no shame in cutting the skewer. Okay. Right. Now, go and open your windows, open your doors, leave the door open there, Kate, if you can, and open the second door there as well. You want to open the second door? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to get hectic in here. This is going to be like the smokiest, unpleasant thing ever. That's why you do this the day before or in the morning. So when the guests arrive, they have no idea. Yeah. And that's why we're doing it on a day when there's absolutely no wind, which is quite unfortunate. Yes, what's up? <laughs> so we have a tent on our sitting room floor, yeah. What I don't have is tongs, though. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay, run and check your pumpkin just to make sure it's okay. I think my pumpkin's done, you know. Well, it's like soft, or it looks caramelized. 
We can do the done test with pumpkin, which What's is like the done test. The done test. Oh, it's done. There we go. If you can mash your pumpkin, then it is done. It sticks to the thing that you're mashing. So my pumpkin looks like that or like that. That is done. Okay, so we're going to take that and put it aside. Over. Over here. Cool. Okay, now we're going to seal off the chicken. And you're going to put it straight back in the raw chicken tray. It doesn't matter because the whole tray is going to go in the oven just now. Do you think we can throw in another method while we're doing that? Yeah, we can make the dressing. Okay, look, I'm going to make the dressing. This is going to take like a minute on each side, so we're going to turn it and turn it and turn it, and then we're going to do the chicken, the second batch of chicken, turn it, turn it, turn it. I'm going to get the salads and everything else ready while we're doing this. And slowly but surely, you're going to see this place just like turn into a massive cloud of thick smoke. So hang out with me while we smoke this place. The only thing you're allowed to smoke in South Africa is your kitchen. Okay, so let's do the tabbouleh first. Okay, so get your get your big mixing bowl, and let's mix the tabbouleh ingredients together. Yeah. So what have we got? Cauliflower, Cauliflower. and cucumber. If you have it. Cucumber, if you have it, and what else? Cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. And avocado, hey? Oh, I put avo in. Oh. So you you made this recipe up? It's not on the list. Oh, it's not on the list. If you don't have avocado, that's fine. I just saw it in the photograph. That's why I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Turn your chicken. There we go. Yeah, you can probably get away with just grilling two sides. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to do it on all four. Okay, avocado. And then? Parsley, lemon juice. Okay. Let's move this to the front. Do we put crumbled feta in? No. Check again. No. Oh, are we reading two different recipes here? For the demo and then a recipe for the... Okay. Oh, okay. So basically I'm making two different recipes at the same time. All right, so what actually goes in this one? Parsley? Parsley, lemon juice, olive oil. Alrighty. Sorry, everyone. Sorry for the confusion. It's all me. Okay. Parsley. And is there mint in? No. The phone's gone weird. My phone's gone weird? Yeah. What do you mean? No, you what was it? The camera or the mic? Okay. Here we go. Okay. Grilled on both sides. Okay. Parsley. Okay, well, I'm just going to throw the other stuff in because I've got it there. Cool. So I've got mint as well. I'm not going to put the feta in because we don't really eat that much dairy. And there's goat's cheese in the pumpkin salad. Okay, so parsley goes in. 
I mean, I've got mint. You don't have to put mint in, but it does add a nice edge to it. Okay, now it's lemon juice and olive oil. Yeah? Okay, mint. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay. Once I've seasoned. Salt and pepper. Lots of salt. And then I'm just gonna how much lemon juice does it say? Like three. Lemon juice. Okay. So I'm gonna put I'm probably gonna put a, a lemon and a half in here. So I've got half a lemon left from my yogurt. Squeeze that in and then grab my grab a freshie and my zester. Check this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, then grab your zester and just zest some lemon juice in. Lemon zest in. If you don't have a zest, don't sweat it. This is just like, gives you the extra edge. If you've got preserved lemon, I would highly recommend putting like a little bit of finely, finely, finely chopped preserved lemon skin. Yeah, I put it in the, um, in the chamula yesterday. Yeah. Okay, and some more juice. Okay, and if you are miles ahead of me, please leave a comment, please share this post, show other people what a cook-along is, because it's quite new. Okay, to be honest, Gordon Ramsay did it in like 2008 or 2009 on national television, but it's making a comeback. So tell some other people, tell them to join. Please post photographs of what you're doing. We want to see how well you're getting off with these cook-alongs. We want to see your creations. If you're making changes to the recipes, let us know because we want to see that too. Like it, share it, tell your friends, etc. Okay, a dollop of olive oil. Nice big squirt. That's obviously to my taste. And let's take these guys out. I wonder if that can go a little longer. Yeah, it's about right. Okay, I'm just going to put this in the garden where it can't hurt anybody <laughs> or it can't smoke up the kitchen anymore. Yeah, just fill it up. All right. Not very well. <laughs> okay. So at this point, by the way, yeah, well, I'm going to put the chicken in now. But at this point, you've dressed your salads, you've roasted your pumpkin, you've basically done everything you need to do. You could literally wrap everything up, put it in the fridge. Have you made the dressing? On a Tuesday? Well, oh, no, I haven't made the dressing. Okay, well, we make the dressing just now. Anyway, we're going to put the chicken in. I'm going to put it in for like 10, 10 15 minutes, 10, 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, we're going to make the dressing, plate up the salad, serve everything, and then the chicken will come out, we will put it on top, and we'll be ready to serve. So tell everyone in your house... You'll be eating in 10 minutes and then walk over to the oven with your chicken and put it in. Yes, that chicken smells so good. Okay. All right, final mix. Where's my spoon? It's my chicken spoon. No, no, this is my spice spoon for the pumpkin. Okay. Mix the tabbouleh up. Whatever form your tabbouleh has taken. Yeah. I'm going to give it a little taste. What's important to remember is that tabbouleh, much like chamula, 
has many different forms, sort of like hummus, I guess. You know, I think the Turkish and Greek populations argue about who invented hummus and probably will continue to argue forever. And uh, I know that my stepmom grew up in Lebanon and she is convinced that tabbouleh is made a certain way. But many people everywhere else in North Africa and the Middle East have different views on how tabbouleh should be made. One thing I'm sure is that they've never made it with cauliflower. Lazy set her brides taking it a bit longer because there's no winch. <laughs> and um, Jenny wants to know if we are roasting the sunflower trunk. Oh, good point. Well, we've got 10 minutes. We can roast the sunflower seeds. Yeah. So if you'd like to roast the sunflower seeds, fire up a frying pan, no oil needed. And chuck them in. Kate, what do you put in your fried sun in your toasted sunflower seeds? Nothing like Just dry like that. Can yeah. you do like a spice mix for a salad once or something? I do, but I I, I toast it until it starts releasing a little oil, and then if I'm gonna add spices on it, it's just a bit. Oh, okay. So we're gonna keep it dry for now. Okay. I'm only gonna use two platters. So I'm gonna put the tabbouleh on here and then I'm gonna put the chicken skewers on top. So we'll leave this one for last because I want to give the tabbouleh a mix just before I serve it. But in this one, I'm going to lay out all my rocket. And you know, if you want it to be easier to serve, you can break up the rocket into little pieces. That's no biggie. Vanessa Hill says her tabbouleh looks great. Great. Glad to hear it, Vanessa. Okay, toss the nuts. Okay, and then all you want to do, if we make the dressing, let's just do one thing at a time. Okay, take your goat's cheese. I'm going to put the pumpkin down first. Only because the, I want the dark and then the light on top. So I want to put the pumpkin down on top of the darkness and then put the goat's cheese on so you get the white contrasting off the dark. Okay, so the pumpkin should be cool by now. You're just going to sprinkle that over. This recipe is from the original Real Meal Revolution. And I know you don't remember, Kate, but this was your idea. Mm. Yep. You were like, what about a spiced pumpkin salad? Yeah. 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 Not bad, hey? There we go. Seeds are toasting nicely. How do you know they're ready? What's that? How do you know they're ready? Winter. Oh, is that a question? How do you know a sunflower seed is ready? You can tell they're ready when they're kind of golden brown and they smell toasty. This is like a budgie's barbecue. <laughs> like a budgie isn't a bird. What? <laughs> well, that's dad joke city over here. Okay. So mine are starting to go slightly brown and they're getting like a nutty flavor. And that's cool. Okay, now I'm going to take my goat's cheese and just break some chunks. You don't have to use all the ingredients if you don't want to. I like nice big pieces of goat's cheese. They look awesome. And they are, and they add like great contrast. There we go. Okay, let's we'll probably use half of this. And then. Okay, the important thing to remember when you're toasting seeds and nuts is that when they are cooked, you want to decant them into something that's not hot anymore. Otherwise, they keep cooking. And even though you took them off before they burnt, they can end up burning as it is. Look at that. That is great. Okay. Sometimes I forget, actually. What? Hot coach? No, that Real Meal Revolution original book was, was good. It was a goodie. Okay, here we go. Nuts are good. Uh, if you can see that, you can see they've got like lots of color. Is that a good angle? Not, not a great angle. Okay, there we go. And then up on top. Okay. So I'm tipping them into my other salad bowl just because that's what I've got. And this I will put over here. That can come off. Okay, so that salad is kind of done. 
Yeah, now we're gonna make the dressing. So you wanna grab a mixing bowl and a whisk, and we're gonna pop this um, mustard in. And just lemon juice, hey? So it's more lemon juice, like 60 mils. Okay, so juice of two lemons. So they must go through millions of lemons in the North Africa. In the Mediterranean, yeah. It's like um, America must go through more smoked chipotle than like anywhere else in the world. It's the same. The old Middle East and the lemons. Okay. James, this is says 250 billion <laughs> <laughs> coffee sold. You die right if it's a goodie. <laughs> Oh, the beast. What a beauty. Okay, here we go. Okay, if you don't get like 80 mils of lemon juice from your two lemons, you will survive because we don't need that much dressing. Okay, so here's the lemon juice and olive oil. We're just going to whisk that together. What's that? No, sorry. Lemon juice and mustard we're going to whisk together. And now... We're just going to add the olive oil and whisk as it goes in. I'm going to turn to my good hand. Okay, and as long as you keep whisking, it should sort of emulsify. Alrighty. Salt and pepper and we're good to go. Just taste it. If it's too sour, you can add more oil in. If it's too flat and there's not really enough acidity, you can add more lemon juice. And if it needs a bit more kick, you can chuck in more mustard. But typically, those are the things you balance with. If you want like punch, then you add more mustard. Obviously, you need to use good mustard. If you want acidity, add the lemon if you need it to be like smoother and softer you can add more oil spot on okay little splash of salt and okay so we are good to go with this one the last step here is to add these seeds they're almost cool i just if you add the seeds onto the salad when they're too hot they actually wilt the leaves a little bit so i'm just i want these to cool off a bit i want to wilt the salad i don't even know if that helps no yeah, pumpkin's cold huh? mm. okay so i'm putting the seeds over Yes. Yeah, and then the dressing you can put over. I'm going to use this salad for like today and tomorrow and the next day. So I'm only going to put dressing on once it's on my plate. But if you're going to serve it for everyone, you can put your dressing on now. So what should I, what's pretty? A blue jug over there. Blue jug. Ah, here we go. Okay. It's clean. There we go. So here's your dressing. Let's pop that there. Okay. Tabuli goes on the platter. Let's get the nuts off. Okay. You want to give it a last toss just to get all that oil and juice from the bottom curling over. Tip that out into your serving platter. There we go. We're we winning. Yes. Okay, thank you.
And here we go. Here the skewers are. And you can see there's some juice coming out, which means the chicken's nice and cooked. And it should smell amazing. It should smell great. Okay. If it doesn't smell great, then I have failed you. So your options now are to serve it as is with your salad and your other salad and your skewers, or you can actually take the skewers and pop them onto the tabbouleh and make like a delicious looking platter. Uh, I just need my, I keep losing stuff. Where are my tongs? I'm all over the place. Ah, here we go. Okay, now you gotta wash the tongs because they've had raw chicken on them. It's real, it's real. Okay, and Kate, how many, it's just us two here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put four on here. Do you want me to make a jungle gym or just a little bit of height? Kate's a fan of the height. There we go. For garnish. Okay. Let's move this thing. And some fresh parsley. Like I what a hero. What does she call him? A princess. A princess is like the magic piece that you find. In every punnet, there's a princess, according to Diane Early. First stylist I ever worked with. Okay, and here's your dressing. And here's your wogat. Okay, will you give me the legs of this? And, oh, that's probably a bit hectic. Okay, and then some salt. Here we go. Okay, party people, that's it. That's Supper Heroes for the weekend, for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're up to date. I hope you are, I hope we've done it in good time and that you had enough time to do it with me. And I wish you all the best. I'll be posting the new ingredients and new prep on Friday. But until then, enjoy your supper, enjoy your leftovers, like the post, share the post, tell everyone what you've been up to. Kate, there's some more, there's some more banners for you to click on. What's the next banner? There we go. Post the photo. Okay. Post the photo, leave a comment, like the post, share the post, and have a lekker week. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for spending your evening with me. And we will see you again next week, Wednesday. Bye.